Hello and welcome to the Chapter 4 podcast on Section 4.5. Today we're going to be talking about concentrations of solutions. Concentrations just refers to how much solute there is in a given amount of solution. We can talk about this qualitatively in terms of calling a solution concentrated or dilute. If I call a solution concentrated, that means that there's a lot of solute dissolved in the solvent, and if it's dilute, that means there isn't as much solute. Um, well, these are nice to talk about generally. Um, in chemistry, it's going to be more important for us to spend time on the quantitative parts of solutions, and that's what we'll start to do today. Uh, the one we're going to use the most uh, for concentrations is something known as molarity. It is basically moles of solute per liter of solution. The symbol is capital M, and the formula for molarity is moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Remember when I say solution, that includes the solute plus the solvent. Just something to kind of keep in mind for later. Uh, here's an example of how we would calculate molarity. So here I give you 5 grams of glucose in 100 milliliters of solution. Well, the first thing we clearly need to do is convert our grams of glucose into moles. So I multiply our 5 grams times 1 mole over the molar mass, which gives me 0 0.0278 moles of glucose. Then, remember, we have, to conter we have to convert our milliliters to liters. So we divide our milliliters by 1,000, and then we're able to divide the moles by the liters, giving us a molarity of 0.278. Um, when, we, we, when we're looking at solutions like this, we would call it 0.278 molar solution for uh, glucose in this case. We can also talk about not only compounds themselves in terms of molarity, but we can also talk about ions or electrolytes and their molarity as well. So for ionic compounds, remember if they're soluble and they completely dissociate, um, we can talk about their molarities in terms of their ions. So for instance, if I have a one molar solution of sodium chloride that's uh, I have a mole of sodium ions and a mole of chloride anions, right? Uh, but if I have something like sodium carbonate, because of the two and the formula, and remember this whole thing dissociates, you're going to have twice the amount of sodium ions as you would carbonate ions. And hopefully by looking at the formula and remembering that moles of atoms or moles of ions make up moles of formula units, that makes sense. So when we're talking about concentrations, most of the time we're going to be talking about it in terms of moles of compounds, but there will be instances where it'll be important for us to talk about it in terms of ions. Uh, here's an example of how we would do a, a, an ion molarity. So let's say we have potassium carbonate and I have a 0 0.015 molar solution of it. Well, first thing you need to know is the, is the uh, formula for potassium carbonate. Remember, it's, it's, it's made up of potassium and carbonate ions. So the actual formula is K2CO3. So we have two moles of K plus for every formula unit of potassium carbonate. And this is kind of similar to the moles of atoms in moles of compounds that we did before. And so here we have our, our molarity. We have two moles of K for every one mole of uh, K2CO3. So the molarity of the potassium ions is actually double of the original molarity. Um, now, we're not always calculating molarity per se. There will be other instances where we want other uh, aspects of molarity that, that we need to calculate. So sometimes we'll be calculating molarity, sometimes we'll be calcul calculating moles or grams of solute, and other times we may be calculating liters of solution. If we know two out of these three values, we can always calculate the third. And so I have these little molarity triangles that I thought might be useful to help you kind of understand how to, how to use them. So molarity is equal to moles over liters. So here's our molarity triangle. We can use it to calculate molarity. We can also use it to calculate moles of solute. So moles of solute equals the molarity times the volume, and liters of solution is moles over divided by the molarity. So I don't know if this visual helps, but I thought it might be nice to, to have. So let's say I wanted to know how many grams of Na2SO4 there are in 15 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution. Well, what we would do is we would solve for moles of solvent first, and then we could convert that into grams, right? 
So if we use our molarity triangle, we know that the moles is going to be the molarity times the volume. So we have our, <coughs> our 0.5 molar solution now. Instead of a capital M, I broke it down into moles over liters just to show you that what, how the dimensional analysis works. We multiply it times the volume, which I convert to liters so that the units match up. And we end up with 0 0.0075 moles of sodium sulfate. And then what I do is I multiply this times... <sighs> there's the bell. Uh, sorry. Uh, we have 142.04 grams. This is the molar mass of NE2SO4. And there are 1.1 grams in the 15 milliliters in the, of this solution. Another example of this, let's say I was solving for volume. So let's say I want to know how many milliliters there are in a 0.5 molar solution if I want to add 0 0.038 moles of the salt. Again, we can use our molarity triangle where the volume equals the moles divided by the molarity. And so here's what I have for that. Um, I rewrote this to show that we're, we're basically multiplying by the inverse of the molarity. So you have 0.038 moles of our salt. We multiply it times the inverse of the molarity. Again, I'm showing this to show you how the units cancel out. This shouldn't be a capital M, by the way. This should be MOL. So the MOLs cancel out, leaving you with 0 0.076 liters. But we want milliliters. And remember that I messed this up too. There should be, I apologize, there should be a 1,000 milliliters in a liter, not a hundred, and this should be mole, oh my god, moles, don't laugh at my writing, and go away, capital M. So now, hopefully that looks a lot better to you, and I apologize for all the typos. Uh, dilutions, we're not always um, adding dry salts or solids to water to make our, our aqueous solutions. A lot of times, especially with acids and other other kinds of solutions, uh, we may have a concentrated stock that we would water down, more in a manner of speaking, to get to a lower molarity. And um, we can use this equation that you see here to um, to figure out how much stock we need to add to get the desired diluted molarity. So it's M times V equals M times V, where C is the concentrated stocks and D is the diluted one. In um, honors last year, we call this M1, V1 equals M2, V2, which is basically the same thing. This visual here kind of shows how we're diluting the stock. You can visually see the difference between the concentrated versus the dilute. So there's your qualitative uh, use. Uh, how do we actually use this in, a, in, a, in an example? If I have 10 milliliters of a 10 molar stock of NaOH and I want to dilute, um, if I take 10 milliliters and I add enough water to make the new volume 250 milliliters, what is the concentration of the solution? Well, here's our equation. The concentrated molarity is 10. The volume is in 10 in milliliters. And then the diluted stock is 250. Now, you don't have to convert these into liters as long as you have the same units. If this had been milliliters and this had been liters, we'd have to convert one to the other unit so that way they would match up. And then we're solving for the diluted molarity. So here I did the algebra ahead of time. Um, concentrated, concentrated divided by the dilute volume. We plug in our numbers and we see that the diluted molarity goes from 10 molar to 0.4. And that is it for now.